welcome to cello lesson number two. For this lesson, you're going to need your uh, hot cross buns paper, uh, your new peas porridge hot paper, your new bow exercises paper, and the other things that you will have taken home from your lesson that you don't need the second, but you should have at home, would be your practice log, make sure you're filling it out, and your beginner lesson two review guide, which includes a very important picture on how to hold your bow. So, additionally, you will need your bow, and you will need your rosin, your cello, and your cello cookie. So if you need to pause the video and get any of those items, go ahead and pause, and I'll see you back here in another minute. All right, so with your bow, you're going to take your rosin, and you're gonna pull it across the hair, generally about five to 10 times, every single time you go to practice. And when you're done rosining, you're gonna put your rosin right back into your case so that you don't accidentally drop it because it will shatter if you accidentally drop it. So as soon as you're done rosining up, go ahead and put it away back into the box, and then back into your cello case. All right. The other thing that you may need to do, I hope that you have to do, because we should always leave our bow lefty-loosey when you put it away, you might need to tighten the bow. So when it goes away, it should look like this, where the hair can actually move because it's nice and loose. But when we go to play it, we're gonna have to turn the bottom the metal piece you're gonna have to do righty tighty until your pinky fits through so right here my pinky won't fit through in the middle without it touching the hair and we don't want to touch the hair so I'm gonna keep on going righty tighty until my pinky fits through ah not quite because it's still touching a little bit so I'll go a little bit further and then my bow is ready now I'm just gonna set that off to the side because we're gonna do the bow in the second half of the lesson. So now let's get your cello ready. Remember, we want to pull the end pin out. First, we have to loosen. We slide it out to where we think we're going to need it, and then you do a righty-tighty so that it stays there. Now, I like to have my cello so it's right around eye level or slightly lower for where my fingers are going to go. So you don't want it to look like this where it's up above your head, and you don't wanna look have it look very, very, very low. So somewhere around eye level where it's comfortable. And remember, the other thing we wanna make sure that we're doing is we're not turning the cello in towards ourselves. So like this, our elbow should not lay against the cello, but instead it should be relaxed and be able to hang loose. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have uh, four strings and we have a phrase to remember it by, which is cool gorillas dance around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our right hand and we have to put our thumb, make sure it's your right, not your left. You put your thumb down at the bottom of the black piece of wood called the fingerboard. We plant our thumb right there, and we're gonna pluck each string three times while saying cool, cool, cool. Oh, I forgot. If you're not on carpeting, I'm on carpeting, uh, so I don't need it. But if you're on a hard floor and your cello slides, go ahead and use the cello cookie to put the end pin on so that it's not sliding around on you. Okay, so here we go. The cello's over our left shoulder, we're going to use our right hand to come down and plant on the fingerboard. We're going to pluck each string three times while saying cool. Here we go. Cool, cool, cool. The next one. Gorillas, gorillas, gorillas. Dance, dance, dance. Around, around, around. Now instead of saying the words, this time let's say the first letter of each of those words. So instead of cool, we'll say C. That's the actual name. Here we go. Cool, cool, cool. Oops, I did it wrong. Say the letter. Here we go. C, C, C. G, G, G. D, D, D. I, I, I. So that's how we're plucking our strings. Now, let's go back to our hot cross buns and we're going to play it on our A string. So if you need to get your music out, Go ahead and get your music out, or you can look at the board behind me. 
we're going to go on the A string. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remember that our thumb goes in the middle of these two tapes and it's also in the middle of the neck. We want to make sure we're not holding it like this, but instead like this. So our thumb is in the back middle and it's between the first two tapes. From there, when we add our first finger, we should make sure we're able to pull that string against the fingerboard. And then we put our second finger in the middle and our third finger gets that final tape. So that's our knee. And we get ready here by planting our thumb and we're gonna pluck knee. Oops. Let's go ahead and chest that out together, three fingers, pulling the string all the way against the fingerboard. Ready, and here we go. Mi, re, do. Now, if you're getting this sound, it's because we're not pulling our fingers the whole way. We're not pulling the string all the way against that fingerboard. Make sure we're up on our fingertips and you pull it completely down. Ready, and here we go. Alright, so let's play the entire song together. Again, we're on the A string, that's the skinniest string. One, two, ready, go. Me, re, do. Me, re, do. Do, 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 do. Re, 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 me, re, do. Alright, another easy string that we can play this on is the C string. That's your biggest, thickest, lowest sounding string. So when we go to pluck the C string, we have to make sure we're actually plucking that first string. But we also have to make sure that our fingers are going on that first string. So let's see if we can reach all the way over. Remember, thumb goes between these two tapes. Our elbow's nice and relaxed, but not laying on the cello. We're gonna put our third finger Second doesn't get a tape. First goes on the first tape. We'll make sure we pull the string all the way against the fingerboard. And we're gonna play the same thing. Ready and here we go. Me, re, do. Me, re, do. Do, 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 do. Re, 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 me, re. Now at this point, you should pause the video if you're having any trouble with hot cross buns, and you should give each one of those a practice with the C string, the G, the D, and the A. Make sure you can play it on all four strings, and they're able to get a nice, beautiful ringing sound, and not any duds. So make sure you're pulling the string completely. So go ahead and pause the video, practice each string, and then I'll see you back in just a minute to play our new song, Peace Porridge On. All right, here is our next song, Peace Porridge Hot. We're gonna sing it together with the words first. And we're gonna sing it starting on this note. We're singing with words, not with soulfish. Here we sing, Peace Porridge Hot, Peace Porridge Cold, Peace Porridge In The Pot, nine days old some like it hot some like it cold some like it in the pot nine days old if you don't remember this song from earlier uh, from second grade you can go ahead and pause the video now rewind and do it a few more times until you have that completely memorized now let's move on and let's sing it with soulfish. Ready and here we sing. Me, 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 me. Ray, 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 ray. Do, 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 do. Me, ray, do. I'm gonna sing it again, but this time I'd like you to play the last phrase. Me, ray, do. Just like in hot cross buns. So I'll do all of it, singing and playing. You should sing with me during the first three phrases. And when we get to phrase four, make sure your fingers are already ready and you can play along. Here I go, me, 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 me. Ray, 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 ray. Do, 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 do. Your turn, me, ray, do. All right, let's add in another phrase. Let's have you play for 
phrase one and phrase four. You'll get to take a little break during phrases two and three, but make sure you're still singing them. It'll help you with playing in just a minute. So your phrase one and phrase four. Ready and third finger go. Me, 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 me. My turn. Ray, 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 ray. Do, 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 do. Me, ray, do. Right. We'll add in another phrase. This time you get phrase one, phrase two, and phrase four, which means the only phrase you're singing, but I am playing, is phrase three. Ready, and here you go. Me, 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 me. Ray, 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 my turn. Do, 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 do. Me, ray, do. All right, at this point, we're gonna do the entire song together. If you need to pause and go back and practice any of those phrases to get ready for this stage, go ahead and pause now. Go back and practice until you're ready to play the whole song with me. All right, here's the whole song. You're gonna have our third finger for me. Let's do the whole thing together. One, two. Ready, go. Me, 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 me. Ray, 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 ray. Do, 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 do. Me, ray, do. Now, will this song work on all of your strings? I hope you said yes, because we have Mi, Re, Do on the C, Mi, Re, Do on G. We already know it works on the D string, and of course we played Hot, hot, cross, hot cross Buns earlier on A. Mi, Re, Do. So make sure you can play this song on all four strings before moving on to the bow. So if you need to pause now and keep practicing on all four strings, go ahead and pause. All right, now this is the moment you've been waiting for when we get to actually use the bow. So, go ahead and get your bow. Hopefully it's already rosined from earlier and you've already tightened it to a point where your pinky can fit through the middle. Now remember, um, I'm actually gonna do this backwards so that when you're looking, you'll be a mirror image. So while you're supposed to use your right hand, I'm gonna be using my left hand to show you what it's going to look like so we look the same as though you're looking at a reflection in the mirror. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hold our bow up, just like this. Make sure that the tip is pointing that way and the frog is pointing that way. Remember, we want to avoid touching the hair, but with your uh, left hand, you're gonna hold the stick of the bow right here. Now, while you do that, I'm going to take your other hand and you're going to flap it around like a jellyfish. Blub, blub, blub. And you're going to just keep it nice and relaxed. And then you're going to bring the bow, the frog of the bow, you're going to bring it up to the jellyfish and go boop and just lift it up. So let's do that again. Relax, relax, relax. And we're going to aim for the knuckles, the middle knuckle right here. We're going to aim to put the stick of the bow right under those knuckles. So here's our relaxed jellyfish. And we're going to take the bow and we're going to lift up on the middle. Feel free to make the ridiculous noise as you do it. The next step is we turn the doorknob. So you're turning it the way my head is tilting, this way. All right, notice how the fingers change their position when we turn that doorknob with our hand. Turn. And the final step is that your thumb that is bent is going to take the very tip and you're going to put it right on the stick of the bow. Notice I didn't put my thumb the whole way through. Notice it's not sideways. The tip of the thumb is touching the stick of the bow and it's bent to the ground. So we're gonna do that whole thing one more time. Relax the hand, jellyfish. We're gonna aim for the middle knuckle, lift up. Whoop. Gonna turn the doorknob, take your bent thumb and put it on that stick on the bottom. And this is what it's going to look like. Practice that as many times as it takes until you're able to do this with keeping your hand very relaxed. Most important, there's a muscle right here in your thumb that has to stay loose. 
If you're squeezing, you can feel it with your other hand. You can feel that, that that is very, very hard and flexed. We want it to stay loose, nice and relaxed. Anytime you feel tension, stop what you're doing. Shake your hand now. Do the jellyfish. Lift up. Turn the doorknob. Put your thumb on the bottom, but stay relaxed. Okay, so we have our bow hold, and you also have the picture from our beginner cello lesson paper number two. So compare your hand with that picture. Have your parents help you. All right, so now with the cello. I'm gonna switch back, so I'm gonna use my correct hand. We are now going to look opposite. So at the beginning, what we wanna do first is set our bow on the strings. Have somebody at home help you make sure that you are parallel to the ground. Not pointing down. This is what a lot of you are gonna to tend to do. Not pointing up but level with the ground, parallel to the ground. The next thing we need to talk about, let me make sure I said the right lane. Okay, so I, in your paper, I put that lane one is beside the bridge. We're not gonna play there. You can just go ahead and set the bow there. Lane two is at the very bottom of this black piece of wood at the bottom of the fingerboard. And lane three is gonna be on top of the fingerboard. Notice how you can see quite a bit of uh, fingerboard sticking out from underneath. The lane that we're gonna play in for now is gonna be lane number two. So what I'd like you to do is while your bow is sitting on your string, take your uh, left hand and see if you can lift the bow. And while you're lifting, you should feel that your pointer finger is able to lean in and you're gonna feel that weight of your pointer finger increase. That is the weight that you're gonna use. You're gonna use your pointer finger to add some weight. Of course, we need to stay nice and relaxed. If you need to stop and redo your jellyfish at any time, pause the video, redo the jellyfish, lift up, turn the doorknob, put your thumb on the bottom. And we're gonna start on the C string. So we're gonna take our bow, we're gonna set it on the C string. And the very first thing we're gonna do is play the rhythm taka dimi ta di. So you're just gonna listen. Don't play with me, just listen. ta ga di mi ta di ta ga di mi ta di We're gonna do that together now. We're gonna do it three times. One, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, we're gonna do it four times. We have a repeat sign. So we'll do ta ga di mi ta di ta ga di mi ta di This is bow exercise number one. I know it says D string. We're gonna start with C. Ready? And C string, go. ta ga di mi ta di if you need to reset your bow hold, go ahead and do the jellyfish. We're going to rock over to the G, and we're going to play the same thing. So you should look, and you can actually do kind of a teeter-totter, and watch how you can get each string to move up and down with your bow weight that's happening from your pointer finger. And you're gonna stop when you get to just the G. So it shouldn't touch C, and it shouldn't, shouldn't touch D, just G. And we're gonna do the same thing four times. Ready, and G, here we go. ta ga di mi ta Just touching the next string, which is D. Ready? Four times. Here we go. Ta ga di mi ta di. 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 And the last one, you're going to rock one more time. Again, make sure the cello isn't turned in towards yourself. One, two, A string, and go. All right. Now that is bow exercise number one. You should not move on to bow exercise number two until you're able to stay parallel and hit only one string at a time. If you're getting a bunch of different strings. You're not ready to move on to bow exercise number two. Keep with practicing this one 
until you can consistently hit one string, keeping the bow parallel and a relaxed, correct bow hold. All right, if you're ready to move on to bow exercise number two, it's very, very similar, but instead of doing takadimi tadi all on one string, you're gonna do takadimi on one string, but the tadi on the string right next to it. So for example, I could do C, 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 G, G, C, 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 G, G. So on there it says any uh, adjacent strings. So you can do it from C to G. You could also start on G and go down to C. You could do a G and D. But do every combination of two strings that are adjacent right beside each other. Uh, when you are consistently able to do that, you are ready for uh, bow exercise number three. So go ahead and pause the video and practice until you're ready to get to bow exercise number three. All right, so bow exercise number three is when we actually get to start adding fingers to a string. So we're gonna choose whatever string is going to be zero. And we can start with C, since that would, that's what I've been demonstrating on a lot. So we'll make C be zero. And then we're gonna play re with our first finger, then mi with our third finger, and then another solfege, which we'll talk about later, with your fourth finger. So what we do is we take our open string and we go do, 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 do. Now it's very important that you have your first finger on the first tape of that string. So right now we're on the C string. Make sure you pull the string all the way against the fingerboard Make sure your thumb is in the back middle between those two tapes. Then we'll play our takadimi tadi with one finger. Here we go. Then we're gonna add our middle and our third finger. Make sure you're pulling the string all the way. Takadimi tadi, here we go. And then the final one, our pinky. That's the hardest one to pull down, so really make sure you have the string all the way pulled down. Here we go. But obviously there aren't any rests in between any of those, so it's really gonna sound like this. single string. Just be careful that if you're on the next string, that if you have your bow on G, that your finger is also on G. Now's the time we're going to be very tempted to turn it this way so you can see easier. Make sure you don't do that. First finger right on the first tape, then third, then fourth. And that'll work as long as you're on this string and your fingers are on the same string. That's why it's very important to practice the other two exercises before you get here. So this is what it will sound like on G. So now's the time to pause the video and you're going to practice that on every single string. And then I'll see you back here for bow exercise number four. All right, so bow exercise number four starts where bow exercise number three ended, and we get to go backwards. This is my favorite. So let's go back to C, the one we've been hanging out on, your biggest, thickest string. Again, check the position of your thumb. Make sure your bow, elbow is not touching the cello. Make sure you have a correct and relaxed bow hold, and that it's on the string and you're parallel to the ground, and your weight comes from your pointer finger. All right, so now we're ready. We have all four fingers down. They're all on the tapes, so we get the right sounding solfege. One, two, fourth finger, go. Release. Release two. Release. Okay, now again, if you move over to G, that means the bow has to be on G, and your fingers have to be on G. 
So now's a good time to pause. Practice that on every single string until you're getting a really beautiful sound and your bow is staying in lane two. And then I'll see you back here for the final bow exercise number five. All right, the final bow exercise number five, we're gonna be changing after each beat. So the first beat is zero, then our toddy is on one, takadimi with three, four fingers with two. So every beat, you're gonna be changing your fingers. I'll just demonstrate it. You can feel free to just watch the first time and then we'll play it a second time and we can do it together. So you can watch the first time. So here I go. Takadimi ta. to do a toddy on four and then you stay there when you start to go backwards so make sure that doesn't trick you all right here we go on the c string four fingers check your thumbs check your elbows check your relaxed and correct bow hold one two open go single string and just make sure whatever string you're playing on your fingers follow the bow so you're on the same string as your bow all right now the last thing that you can do once you have all the bow exercises figured out is you can go back to hot cross buns and play from memory where you put three fingers down let's say we're gonna go on C string and you can play your Same thing with peas porridge hot. And you can play that on all four strings, both songs, but don't attempt to do those songs until you've already mastered um, bow exercises one through five. That way you're able to get a nice beautiful sound and not get frustrated. All right, the final thing that you need to do before packing up is remember, lefty loosey, lefty loosey, until the hair is able to wiggle. The end pin, lefty loosey, and put it away. Tighten it up, righty tighty. And don't forget to mark down on your practice log how many minutes you just spent practicing your cello. And at the very end, you can add up your total minutes, get a parent signature, and bring it to your next lesson. If you have any problems, need any help with anything, you're always welcome to come in and see me right when you get off the bus and I'll be happy to help. Happy practicing, see you next time.